Hi, welcome to Wholeheartedly for the Lord Bible Journaling with Sherry. Today's process video will be in my Thrive Bible and my Agenda 52 Planner. I'm using this beautiful kit from Beautiful Good News. Go to her Etsy shop, use code Sherry20, and you'll get 20% off of anything that you purchase from her shop. And this is my Agenda 52 Planner. I've decided to pare down. I'm only going to use one planner this year, and this is going to be the planner. I will use digital planners. But as far as a physical planner, I'm going to stick with this so that I can put my full attention to this planner. I'm also in my Thrive Bible, which I love to do my personal reflections and devotions in. And I want to share with you a scripture in Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verses 1 through 7. Thank you for watching. And remember, if I can Bible journal, so can you. Take care. I tell you, the Word of God is so powerful. I wanted to share with you my reasonings for not making New Year's resolutions. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it. I'm not saying that we shouldn't do it. If you feel like it's something that you need to do and you're going to be committed to it, then by all means do it. Uh, I am just personally convicted by this scripture that I've read several times and this is the time where it just kind of resurfaced itself because this is a time where a lot of people in the world make resolutions, lose weight, do this, start a business. They make all of these plans and things like that. And most times, a lot of these things do not come to fruition for whatever reason. But sometimes we make promises that we do not keep. And we mean well. We mean well, but we don't keep them. And this is a time of year where people are just in a rush to just like, this is a new year and it's a new time. And so I want to do this. I'm going to, as Christians, I'm going to promise God, I'm going to be more committed. I'm going to be more faithful. I'm going to read my word more. I mean, we just make these vows, 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 vows. And for the Lord, he is not governed by time. He is not governed by time like we are. So 2022 is just another day to him. And for a believer, 2022, yes, it's a new year in the calendar, but every day his mercies are new. Every morning we have an opportunity every day to start fresh and to start new. If we have breath in our lungs, we have an opportunity to glorify God, to be more committed to him and to sanctify him through righteousness and holy living and living for him and standing for him. And so in Ecclesiastes chapter five, it says, walk prudently when you go into the house of God and draw near to hear rather than to give sacrifice of fools for they do not know they do evil. Be not rash with your mouth and let not your heart utter anything hastily before God. For God is in heaven and you are on earth. Therefore, let your words be few. For a dream comes through much activity and a fool's voice is known by his many words. When you make a vow to God, do not delay to pay it. Pay it because for he is, has no pleasure in fools. Pay what you have vowed. Better not to vow than to vow and not pay. Do not let your mouth cause your flesh to sin, nor say before the messenger of God that it was an error. Why should God be angry at your excuse and destroy the work of your hands? For in the multitude of dreams and many words, there is also vanity, but fear God. And you can read those verses over for yourself and search it out, but it's so powerful. And I am more resolute, no pun intended, than ever not to make a vow before the Lord because he considers it as vanities, many words. He wants us to have few words and we go before the Lord, whether it's in a physical sanctuary or the sanctuary of our home because we are in a pandemic or whenever you go into the presence of God through prayer, we ought to go humbly and quietly and reverently and listen to his word and listen to the preached word if we're in the sanctuary and the word that is taught and not be so quick to make a promise to God because he takes what we say personally with gravity and he's expecting us to hold up our end of our bargain and I'm so convicted because there was so many times that I've made resolutions to God and promises to God that I have broken and that breaks God's heart that grieves his spirit therefore in this regard I will not cause my lips 
to sin before the Lord because I made a promise that I did not keep. And he wants me to come before him with fewer words and listen to him more. And he equates many words with dreams in verse 7. Multitude of dreams. People dream, 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 dream. And it takes them away from the word of God, God's direction. And he considers that vanity. And Solomon says, but fear God. Not the vanity of dreams, not the vanity of many words. Fear God. If we just trust him, trust his word and allow him to lead us and to be taught in his word by people who are going to rightly divide his word in context, then we won't have any trouble with what he wants us to do in our lives. And if for some reason we are, we misstep, he will redirect us. So I will not utter this vow before the Lord. I will not make commitments to do things concerning the Lord just in case I don't follow through because this word just that I just read just says that it's better to not make a vow than to make a vow and not pay it. And that's what keeps me from resolutions and vows anymore. So now I want to not only be careful of my speech before man and the things that I allow to leave my lips, but also what I utter before the Lord. Thank you for watching. I hope you are encouraged and inspired by this video. And if you haven't made a New Year's resolution, it's okay. Just love the Lord and continue to live for Him each and every day. Take care.